Duncanville is one of the worst animated shows I have ever seen. It is a show that has a very prevalent identity crisis, has some of the worst writing, is filled to the brim of cringy references that try to attract Gen Z kids and teens, which it failed at, it has boring characters, horrible plots, and overall, it's yet another Family Guy clone. I mean, it even has characters ripped straight from Family Guy. It's no wonder that with these problems, the show struggled with its status and popularity, leading to the show being cancelled after three seasons. This show was a pain to watch. Originally, I was planning to watch every episode for this video, but I was only able to stomach season 1 and a few episodes of season 2 and 3. I'm not saying this show is borderline unwatchable, but it gets pretty f***ing close. This show is just so bland and unappealing. It does nothing that makes it stand out, it just takes what other successful adult animated shows have done and copy it into their own show. Instead of having cutaway gags that are used in Family Guy, they use these daydream segments where the characters daydream. Now on the surface, if they put their own spin on the cutaway gags, this could have worked. Like maybe have an episode where Duncan is taking a test and he's afraid he's going to fail and have him daydream and over exaggerate the outcome of him failing. But instead of being creative, the writers do the same thing Family Guy does with their cutaway gags and just plop stupid pop culture references into the show. Nothing is done with this aspect of the show to make it stand out. And that just shows the creators insistence of just copying off more popular shows to try and lazily gain some type of audience. Like a lot of adult animated shows nowadays, the art style looks like knockoff Family Guy, which is a problem with a lot of Fox animated shows that continue to just pump out I mean, just look at these characters for Duncanville compared to Family Guy. The art style is nearly the same. What's even worse is that they actually copy paste the Family Guy character right into the show. They just took Herbert the pervert, gave him a gender swap, and made her be a creep around Duncan. And this character isn't even funny. She's just creepy. This show has so many problems, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Duncanville is an animated family sitcom co-created by comedian Amy Poulter, and Simpsons veterans Mike Scully and Julie Scully. The show focuses on a 15-year-old kid named Duncan Harris and his family and friends as they get into wacky shenanigans. The series premiered on February 16, 2020, and around this time, Fox was really trying to push the show, even putting ads for the show in the Super Bowl that year. And it seemed like for its first season, Duncanville was doing pretty good for a while. The premiere of the show garnered around 1.5 million viewers, and from there, the show got a consistent 1 million viewers per episode throughout the first half of season 1. But by episode 8 of the season, the show had fallen down to 0.98 million viewers per episode. And with seasons 2 and 3, the viewership only got lower. As season 2's premiere only had an average of around 0.72 through 0.54 million viewers per episode, Dunganville's final season, season 3, dropped to an average of around 0.40 through 0.60 million viewers per episode, and was the final nail in the coffin for the show. Fox announced shortly after season 3's finale that it was putting the plug on the show. It wasn't doing well with Fox's older demographic, the ratings were abysmal, it had zero online popularity or fandom, and it wasn't making a profit for the company. So Fox put it out of his misery to almost zero fanfare. But when you actually watch the show, you can tell why it ended up falling flat on his face. Duncanville has a number of glaring issues that make it an awful show. So today, I'm going to go over every problem with the show and what led up to its demise. Duncanville's main problem is that it has the most bland and nothing characters I've ever seen. They are so unappealing, uninteresting, and unlikable. You have the dad, Jack Harris, and his whole character is that he's a man-child pushover. There is really nothing to his character other than that he's a plumber, pushover, weak husband and father. That's pretty much it. That's his character. Then you have the mom, Annie Harris. She is a little bit more interesting as a character. She has an alright personality and is one of the better and more interesting characters in the show. She is basically the leader of the family since the dad's a complete idiot, but she never becomes uncaring or unlikable. Then you have Duncan, the main character of the show. Like, like he's literally in the title of the show. So, of course, with him being the main characters, the writers will put their focus on making him an appealing and likable character who is two-dimensional and has depth, right? Right? 
Well, no. Duncanville is a total loser. His whole character is him not trying anything and just striving to be average. If Duncan's character was that on the outside he strives to be an average Joe, but on the inside he really doesn't want to be an average Joe, his character would have worked. Maybe he doesn't want to get a C plus on that test. Maybe he wants to get an A plus. But he's afraid that if he tries he'll fail, so why try it all? This would have given Duncan a leg to stand on and make him a more interesting character. But forget everything I just said because this isn't his character at all. He just strives to be average. That's it. Other than Mia, who is his love interest throughout the show, he has no interests, no goals. He just goes for every episode doing the same things, and it's really, really terrible. Duncan has three modes. One, he doesn't want to do something, so he just doesn't do it. Until someone forces him to. Two, he doesn't want to do something until he realizes it will make him look cool in front of his crush or benefit him in some way. Three, he wants to do something to cheer up his family after he messes up. He's the worst fucking protagonist. He's just so one-dimensional, bratty, and unfunny. Another problem with Duncan is his voice acting, which is some by Amy Poulter, the creator of the show. Now, don't get me wrong. Female voice actresses can voice male characters very well. Look at Bart Simpson, Bobby Hill, and Hugh and Riley Freeman. They're all voiced by women, and they do a great job. But with Poulter, her lines fall flat most of the time, and worst of all, you can tell it's a woman voicing him, which is just very poor from a voice acting standpoint. Like, if you can't voice male characters and you're a woman, just don't try. You're way better at voicing Duncan's mom, but that's about it. Duncan also has three friends and they hang out in this god-awful dump of an RV. Out of the three of them, I only liked Wolf, as I mostly enjoy his moments in the show for the most part. His other friends are just social media influencer and tom girl who have no character or personality whatsoever and are very enjoyable and are mostly forgettable he has a love interest named mia as i stated earlier and she's all right nothing much to say about her other than that she's a smart confident activist type character she's the only one of the kids in the show who doesn't feel like a total loser then you have the middle child of the family kimberly she is just so Fucking unlikable. She always wants to insult people, but can never take insults back. So what'd you do last night? Sit in your room and cry? Mia, I'm sorry I'm so ugly and have pimples on my back. <laughs> you have pimples too. Oh my god, mom, that is so mean. She is such an unlikable character. The show tries to justify her actions with them hinting that she does it all for attention and she feels neglected. But it's only in one episode that she's being ignored and neglected, and it never really comes to a conclusion. It just feels so contrived solely for the purpose of the audience feeling sorry for her. The last character of the family is Jing, who is the adopted daughter of the family, and she is pretty sweet. She has her sassy moments, but all around an alright character. One thing I didn't like about Jing is her consistent hitting on Duncan. They even kinda have a damn wedding in this show. As long as I can remember, which is about 10 months ago, I've always wanted to marry you. What? Oh. <laughs> what? What? What the, the fuck? They're, they're brother and sister. Siblings. Who, who thought this was a good idea? Was this supposed to be some type of joke? Because if so, it just comes off as so weird, creepy, and unfun. Actually, there's just a lot of incest jokes in the show. <laughs> Hey, Mom, can I borrow $100 for school? Don't be fooled, Duncan. These girls are not in love with you, so get that out of your head right now. They're working women, just like your mom. I'm naked, you lucky duck. Um, she, she's your mom? Uh, okay. Getting back on top of Jing, they could have focused on her backstory, as that would have made for a pretty good character exploration storyline. But these writers are so branded, they didn't even do that. They didn't even make an episode exploring who her real parents are, her life before she was adopted by the Harrises, we just get nothing. In fact, almost none of these characters get explored in a show. They just do whatever the plot leads them to like zombies. The characters have no depth and just follow the plot of the episodes, which just makes them feel so empty. There is zero depth or character to them. They just follow whatever the plot tells them to, 
and this is what makes the characters in the show feel boring. Speaking of the show, it is just very bland. It went three seasons and never figured out what it wanted to be as a show, and never improved at all. If you've seen one Duncanville episode, you've pretty much seen them all. I watched every episode from season one, and there was a point there where I felt the show was trying to get better. The first three episodes were just... awful. The first episode wasted a lot of time with the plot. Having a major plot point happen with only five minutes left in the episode from all the filler. This episode also gave me bad vibes in it. It was trying to be like Big Mouth with the puberty humor. The episode also began the slew of Gen Z references in the show, like having a marshmallow-like character in the show called S'mores, and a very obvious Max Singer reference. Episodes 2 and 3 were meh, boring, unfunny, and the plots were very dull and uninteresting. But around episode 4 and 5, it looked like the show was starting to improve. I really liked that these episodes' plots were more focused, and the episodes were kind of enjoyable and above average from what the show have been doing so far. Episodes 4's plot revolved around Duncan's town celebrating Witch Day, a holiday commemorating the burning of witches. Jeez, what the fuck is wrong with this town? The tradition is that the town writes down their darkest secrets and puts them in this witch pinata thing, and the town virgin burns the witch along with the town's secrets, but because the town virgin regular gets knocked up, Duncan becomes the town virgin and of course he hates it. Also, there's finally a good subplot in this episode. The mom and dad winning a chili competition by selling a dead competitor's chili was pretty messed up, but kind of funny. And at the end of the episode, the town basically gets shamed by Mia for celebrating such a bad holiday and not giving context to the true history of the town's past. The episode had jokes I actually laughed at, and even though it wasn't at all amazing, it was a big step up from what the past three episodes had done. Episode 5 is somewhat of a downstep from Episode 4, but it still has a relatively decent plot. The plot of this episode is that the Harris family's refrigerator broke down, and they need to get it replaced. So they buy this new one, and it's a super high-tech fridge. It's like an Alexa... whatever it was, a refrigerator. So of course it spies and collects data on them, all while trying to seem so innocent and giving the family advice and ordering them nice things. This episode with its plot wasn't the best, but again, it is a huge step forward from what the first few episodes had done. However, I can't praise this episode too much because it has one of the cringiest references in this entire show. Having an extremely cringy and annoying scene where the Harris family sing Baby Shark for like 30 seconds and... Yeah. This show has a problem. However, the jokes mostly don't interrupt the plot and the episodes were... Alright, nothing amazing, but just... Alright. But even with these slight improvements, it was never anything major or amazing. These episodes are more of an illusion. The show tricking me into thinking it was getting better, because... In reality, it would only begin to get worse. The longer I watched the show, the more unbearable it became with the cringy social media references that make me just cringe my ass off. Jokes that are unfunny and interrupt the main plot. And Family Guy clone aspects that really don't help the show at all. It's insane to me that Fox held on to the show for so long. You think after the click decline in ratings in Season 1, that the show would just be cancelled on the spot. But because Fox is really trying to bring back animation domination, Fox gave the show a second chance. A second life. With Season 2. Which did even more poorly than Season 1 feeling to bring in even 500,000 viewers per episode. I really don't have too much to say about Season 2 since I was only able to stomach two episodes before I just gave up and quit watching the show because of the sheer pain and torment every episode brought me. The first two episodes of the season were point blank terrible. There is nothing redeeming about them, they are average, predictable, and outright boring episodes that lack any sort of substance or structure. And when you think it's over, Fox, again, renewed the show for a third season that was even more unsuccessful than season 1 and 2. Season 3 is just the worst season, having one of the worst episodes of the entire series, mainly because of the Ninja cameo. That's right, you heard me. Ninja, that Fortnite streamer. Ninja, they, they have him in this episode. And please, Fox, just end the show already, please. 
No more seasons of the show. Please, I don't want to watch anymore. Fox, please, just cancel the show. Please. <laughs> Thank God. Lungaville officially was canned by Fox due to low ratings and an even lower popularity score with an older demographic. Now that I went over Dunkinville and my impressions from this mess of a show, I wanted to go over with the overall problems that hurt the show and made it unappealing and unbearable as it was. A major problem with the show is that it's just unappealing. The character designs, background designs, everything just looks so unappealing. Nothing is done to make the show stand out or be memorable. The house is just this basic looking house and the designers decided to give it this light gray look and it just looks so boring and appealing. You could have at least given it some color to stand out. I did a little redesign in 5 minutes and while not perfect it's miles above whatever this is. Another prominent location in the show is this dump of an RV where Duncan and his friends hang out and it's just awful. It's just a trash heap. There's nothing about this location that will make it iconic or memorable. Maybe in a Mad Max movie, not in an animated sitcom. Character designs, like I said before, look like knockoff Family Guy, but what's even more worse is the execution of the character designs. Like, just look at the dad's character design, it's awful. You have all these vibrant colors from all the other members of the family, except for the dad, he just looks straight up like a hobo. What is up with this brown jacket, it just looks gross. The animation is... meh. It's nothing perfect. I noticed a lot of animation errors a few times. Like in a scene where Kimberly walks off screen, at the last second before she walks out of frame, she just dashes off at 5 times speed like Sonic for some reason. It's just so jarring. Most of the cars or vehicles in the show are animated using CG, and you can tell when a car is 2D and when a car is 3D. It just looks very off-putting. All of these factors make Dunkerville at face value look like a very poor show. But when you get into the writing and the focus of the show, it gets much, much worse. One of the most jarring things about this show is its target demographic. Fox Entertainment's main demographic is 18 to 34 year olds, and it makes sense. But from what I've watched, the demographic focus of the show is mainly Gen Z kids and teens. Now, I'm not saying this would be in any ways wrong. Bob Burgers kind of did the same thing by being a show watched by mainly adults, but it also resonated with kids. But the difference is that Bob Burgers did this in a genuine way, giving us characters that the masses related to and fell in love with. But with Duncanville, they try to appeal to mainly kids and teens by using trendy references. And what's funny is that most of the Gen Z references in the show are really outdated. The Ninja cameo, for example, was especially dumb, since Ninja has had a fall in popularity since 2020, and is basically at his lowest point he's ever been in popularity. And it really shows how desperate this show is for anything. This show has a high reliance on the characters using phones, gaming, or having spoofs of popular YouTubers and social media stars like Marshmallow and Ninja. It just feels so awful. I just really like to pretend that Duncanville is a fan fiction written by this 40 year old dude because that's genuinely what it feels like. It just feels so corporate and awkward. The people writing the show do not understand Gen Z culture at all. They just reference it in hopes that Gen Z will watch and while trying to be in touch with this younger demographic, the show is out of touch because it isn't genuine. Throwing references into people's faces doesn't make a show appealing or interesting. Instead of working more on characters to make them appealing and interesting to this demographic they want to appeal to, they focus on pop culture references that try to grab viewers. The episode Ninja Stars in is where we can really see the show starting to get more desperate for attention. In the episode, Duncan and his friends accidentally donate a lot of money to charity that's sponsoring Ninja. I I, I mean Slayer, that's, that's the name of the episode, Slayer. But they don't really have a lot of money on a credit card, it's blank or something, so they don't really donate the money, but regardless, the gang gets flown out to, to Ninja, I, I mean Slayer's private island, where he confronts them for being scammers and challenges them to a Fortnite style battle royale. You guys ready to jump? Jump? Yeah baby, we're dropping in Fortnite style, let's get it. <laughs> Ugh, this episode is just plain awful. The gaming moments in this episode are just so off-putting and laugh to be bad and cringy. 
this show does not understand gaming culture at all. They thought this episode would be their big break, but like I said before, Ninja's career has fallen off and no one even cares about him anymore. So of course this episode only got a small amount of viewers and did nothing for the show, other than be really cringy. The main problem with this demographic focus is that it alienates Fox's main demographic and target audience of 18 to 35 year olds, which is incredibly stupid. The only time they address this older demographic is in the dumbest way possible. 80s references. For the older viewers of Duncanville, the show thinks that 80s references will be enough to suffice, which is incredibly dumb since one, not everyone grew up in the 80s. Some people were born and grew up in the 90s, so it's very prophetic to have such a laser focus on the 80s and no other decade. Two, the references for the 80s are just corporate filming cringy and disconnected as a Gen Z references. There's an episode where the mom and dad are having their anniversary, but then they go to this 80s inspired party place and this Muppet guy is there and it's just so wacky. There's like 1 million references so adults who grew up in the 80s and watch the show can relate to. Oh look, don't count. 80s rock, this show gets me. This is not how relatability works. No real connection is being made with the audience over any of these references. It's just super nostalgia beating. This show is just desperate for attention. While doing nothing other than shoving references into people's faces and having lackluster characters, plots, and art style. In terms of comedy, sometimes the show will have an offensive or dark joke, but that rarely ever happens. The majority of the show is just wacky and stupid comedy. All the jokes in the show are just bad and unfunny. What really hurts the show is the pacing. Jokes really interrupt the episode's plots, and it's really annoying and distracting. Speaking of plots, the show cannot balance A and B plots well. If the show is only focusing on one plot, the episode might be decent, but if it's an A and B plot episode, it's going to suck since both plots will most likely be nothing plots and it's just going to turn out to be a boring and painful episode to watch. At the end of the day, Duncanville is a show I wouldn't recommend to anyone. It has a variety of unlikable and boring characters, horrible writing and plots, ideas and even characters that are just ripped straight from Family Guy, an abysmal art style, blacklister animation, cringy references, and a show that never figured out what it wanted to be, and never wanted to. It was content in saying the same, and that's exactly what it did. All of these factors led up to low viewership, low popularity, and eventually, cancellation. Duncanville is one of the worst animated shows I've seen in a long while. It is so unengaging and boring, and I'm glad it's gone forever. And I will never have to watch this show ever again. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe, and I will see you Ramalamas in the next video.